Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Everyone, welcome. Chris Petrie here. We're uh, going to get into some really interesting um, contour drawing and some work with tonal values uh, with some watercolor um, washes. Um, over the last few videos I've um, worked on uh, some exercises that we, we talked about in the um, book called Keys to Drawing. Uh, great book. Uh, I recommend it to anyone that follows my channel, anyone that wants to um, uh, continue on working on drawing skills and painting skills and uh, overall just some great um, uh, information in the book for, for the watercolor artist. Uh, so here what we're going to do is, um, you'll see I have a um, uh, the book open to a specific exercise. This is um, basically a um, contour drawing of a table with um, uh, art supplies and then on top of the drawing or over the drawing we have uh, some watercolor washes uh, uh, in uh, black and white uh, in tonal value. Now originally this might have been a colored um, photograph and then when they when they created the book it might have um, translated into black and white I'm not sure but in any case um, working with uh, just let's say uh, a sepia tone or a black ink or black watercolor paint uh, really can be helpful to get the feel for um, light and shadows in a, in a composition so let's go with this idea so here we have the painting and then um, what, what I'm going to do is I'm even going to get a little more, uh, I want to try to break this down a little bit more since this is a lot of information to draw and since we're making a video here and we're not going to spend maybe hours on this one painting, we'll take a section of this and we'll, we'll basically use a, um, a piece of paper and we'll cut out a small window like a mat, like a, like a, um, when we're framing uh, paintings, a lot of times you'll see mats uh, inside the frame that go around the painting to kind of give it a nice border. So we're going to do the same thing, just we're going to use a piece of uh, paper for our mat to section off a, uh, a smaller part of this um, painting. So the way we can do that, it's not too difficult. We would take, um, first off, we would go with a, um, uh, a ruler, a standard ruler. Um, something similar to this and a piece of paper and then we would um, decide on how much do we want to section off here uh, to make our to reduce down our drawing in painting so you can do this with any painting or any scene that you see um, when you're working to create a, a painting so here I'm gonna say I'd like to section off this area here mostly so maybe a nice, let's say we're going to do half of this composition here. So then I would just take my ruler, I'd measure two inches from here, and then here approximately three. So I'm going to take this piece of paper here and just make a um, two by three window. Two. We'll draw a straight line. And then we're going to go three. And then two. And that gives us our, our window that we're going to use. And next we would Basically, uh, I would go with um, a pair of scissors, and then I would just um, maybe break break a hole through the through the um, through the paper, and then I would just trim around the window. just do it carefully it doesn't have to be perfect we're just using this to you know create a small window for our, to section off our painting we could also take strips of paper and put tape uh, magic tape on there 
magic uh, tape is good. It won't uh, stick to the paper and then ruin the... Uh, but to be on the safe side, I don't want to ruin my book at all and destroy the um, book. So... And this is pretty much... And then we have our, our window. And then I will use a little bit of magic tape, actually. Now here, since I'm going to rest, rest this book up across from me, I have to trim this down so that it doesn't sit, so that this mat doesn't sit below the bottom of the book, because then when I go to put it on the table, it'll rip and, and, and move upwards. So I'm going to make sure that my that the bottom of my window doesn't go below this edge of the book here. So I cut the bottom of that. That looks good. So then here I'll get a piece of magic tape. I have some good artist tape. I can use that instead. And I'll just Okay, and then I'm going to set this up across for me. And then we'll, we'll begin to create our contour drawing. So the first thing I'll do is... Um, I'm, I want to make sure I'm lined up correctly here. Okay, I just I drew it a rectangle, and now I'm going to begin to um, contour draw the um, the exercise that we're looking at. Now here, I think um, you'll often hear me uh, mention this, and um, I think m probably many of you uh, use this now a lot um, with your drawings. Um, so I'm I'm thinking everyone's pretty much using this at this point. Um, doing a preliminary very very light sketch just to get the um, layout overall layout of where everything is in the rectangle itself so here we're going to look at the uh, drawing in front of us and we're going to say about a third of the way up is the table and then there's the uh, thickness of the table and then underneath there's some shadows and so forth then on this side here there's a square type jar, and then here is a, a block of some sort. And then behind that, and it doesn't have to be exact, we're just doing a, a quick uh, preliminary sketch here, and then here is Like a, it looks like a jar. And then we have some pencils and pens and, and maybe some brushes. All right, so here, so now I have a super light preliminary sketch so that I got the feel for what's in the in the rectangle according to what we have in our book that we um, were working from here. Keys to drawing is the book. And this is, we sectioned this painting off and made it a little bit smaller so we can, um, you know, have a, a little less 
items to, to draw so that we can move through this at a, at a decent pace here. So now we have the overall uh, composition looking good. It looks pretty much very close to what we're, uh, is across from us in our, our, our picture. And now we can go in and we can do our uh, contour drawing. We can use pencil. We could we could use we could switch to a pen if we wanted to, like an ink pen. Um, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll. I'll use a. Um, maybe we'll use like an office pen. They work great for drawing. So I'm just going to use a, an office pen, and we'll we'll do the contour drawing. So we're starting here, we're just going slow. We're keeping our pen or pencil on the paper at all times, we're not lifting up at all. And we're just going to move around. The um, objects. And if for some reason it doesn't, it doesn't always have to be exact. If you find that you've maybe something is not quite exact, not to worry. As long as we have the overall idea of what we're drawing here, we're fine. So here we are, we're going around, and we're just contour drawing everything. So we're basically, in a sense, we're going, we're, um, we're making a trip through the drawing, and we're not so concerned about going and finishing specific things at one time. You can continue through your drawing because you're so intently focused on what's across from you in your drawing and the shapes that are you're seeing of the objects that you're drawing that's the key to contour drawing you're not so much worried about finishing let's say a glue bottle that we're working on right now or finishing a jar with pens and pencils we're looking at shapes and saying what am I? and then in, my, in our minds we're thinking what are we actually doing we're following we're just following the shapes of what we're seeing and maybe this shape might be similar to a, a cylinder or you know something else might look sort of like a sphere or something round so we're not we're just kind of thinking about the shapes and not so much the objects that what they are because that might throw us off a little bit because if we're so concerned about thinking about what the actual object is we might lose track of the actual shape that it is if that makes sense at all And here's a pen. That's a pencil here. Now I'm seeing there's a um, there's some interesting uh, decorations or um, stripes on the the uh, jar that the pens and pencils are in. So I'm going to try to see if I can get those. And occasionally I will lift up my pen. Um, but I try to, I try to really not do that. I try to keep my pen down at all times, or my pencil down at all times when I'm drawing. Oh, 
Okay, so we're all right. That looks good. We we pretty much made it all the way through our um, contour drawing without lifting up our pen or pencil that much. And so that's the key. And again, the the idea is. We're looking across at the painting or the drawing that we're working from or even the object if we just have these objects let's say set on a table in front of us if we took up some of our art supplies and we took our art supplies and we set them across on a table from us and we decided to draw those and contour draw those we would do the same idea we would first do that preliminary sketch to figure out how much uh, are we going to have those items in our painting are we going to have a lot of space around them or are we going to zoom in and just do a, a small section of of those objects? And then once we start drawing, we're we're focusing on the shapes of the of the um, objects, not so much that it's a um, a glue jar or a um, stick of clay or a small book or a jar or pencils and pens. Of course, as we're drawing these things, we're gonna we know that's what they are, but our idea is more let's focus on just carefully looking at the shapes and just letting the pen go as you look back and forth from your drawing to your objects or your picture that you're working from. So it's just back and forth, slow. Um, so in, in it, like if you're not used to contour drawing, in the beginning you have to go real slow. And then as time goes on, you'll find that your pace will go quicker and quicker as you go over time, let's say months. Um, if you're used to drawing quite a bit, you might find that your pace will go quicker after a shorter amount of time. But all it is is just carefully going and stopping if you have to, to check an angle. Like up here, if let's say you're going to draw here and then you, you're not quite sure of the angle on that, maybe uh, a stick or something that's in that jar. Well, you can always stop when you're drawing, contour drawing, and just hold your pen, look at the angle, kind of say to yourself, ah, oh, what does that look like? Well. If I'm looking at a watch, um, that looks like one o'clock. And then you can see, all right, so that's a, a one o'clock angle. And so forth. So you can use like a watch dial to kind of guide your direction for your pen. That works, that, that's helpful. So if you have to stop and uh, just you know put your, put your pen on hold or your pencil on hold and say, I wonder what that angle is. Well, that's really barely, it's just a little bit less than straight up and down plumb. So I would just go on a little slight angle. Okay, so um, this should make sense. Um, with contour drawing, we, we, we're looking really for the shapes of things. And now we have uh, the... the basic drawing complete. Now we're going to go in and we're going to do some washes and we're going to try to use our drawing and wash because this is actually a drawing with some watercolor wash over it. So again that's the picture we're working from. The drawing and, and uh, wa uh, watercolor washes on top of a, a ink drawing. Pen, I think it's pen that he, this person used. So now I'm going to go in, I'm going to use just my simple, um, this is a very inexpensive um, non-toxic paint. So use some black, some brown, maybe a little bit of uh, some red, some orange, make it an interesting uh, darker color. And so that's what we're going to do is just we're going to get some darks in. And now I'm just going to keep very close so I'm carefully following the the painting across from me now in the beginning it's simple for me because when I looked at the painting, 
I noticed that the backdrop is all really a large mass of dark um, paint, uh, paint. So now this is a lot more simple for me as I go in. I know I can go right in and work on the the very dark tonal value that's in the background, the backdrop of this uh, painting. And I just carefully carefully move around the the brush. All right, that's looking pretty good. We're we're pretty accurate with our um, our drawing and painting across from us. We're looking good, so we'll keep going here. We're I'm going to do mostly the darkest darks first. Here's where, here's where we have to be very careful not to lean our hands into the paint that we've just uh, put into the background of this. So if you have to, you can kind of turn your body a little bit. So right now I'm kind of turning to the side and holding my brush. And I have my hand above the painting so that I don't lean into the actual wet washes that are, that are here. And if I see a couple things, spots that I'm looking to, you know, I can still, I'm seeing that there's a stripe under here too as well. So I'm just kind of filling in as I go. And if it's a little different again, I guess the reason I say if we do the darks first, the darkest darks first, then it's a little bit easier now because now we're going to just, now I'm going to go over here and start a, another section in my, in my pan that's going to be lighter. So we were using this really, really dark mix here first. Now we're going to make a lighter mix next to it. And, and as we mix this next section here in the palette lighter, we can see there's obviously a, a very big difference between this and this mixture here. So now we know this will be our lighter tonal values. So our darkest darks we put in first using the dark mixture. Then we don't worry about that. We're just going to use this now to, to finish up because there's not going to be anything as dark anymore. I don't believe in the painting. Maybe a Maybe something I might need to adjust, but for the most part, we have all our darkest darks in now. So now we'll go in, we'll get our medium, uh, medium uh, tonal values in. And then you can do fine fine tune adjustments afterwards, but, but for the most part, now we're going to go in and we're going to do some of our like mediums medium tones here. And
I'll leave the table white here. Then there's some some tonal shadowing here. Maybe it's good to mix, uh, you know, mix up the brush strokes. Maybe not always, you know, it kind of looks good if you kind of change directions with the brush. Adds a little bit of variety to the um, to the feel of the painting. And whatever you do, never worry if you if you go over the lines here. I know I know this is like can drive some people crazy. Like if you've done a fantastic job, you did your contour drawing, and then you're painting, and you by accident, you know, a line you, you cross over a line that you didn't want to. That's okay. Really, it looks good. Actually, it looks better that way when you have a little bit of things crossing over into other lines, and it gives it like a spontaneous you know a spont spontaneous look to it where it's not everything exact perfect you know so never worry about that that's just one little thing I, I learned um, along the way is um, if you go over a pencil line or or you go outside of a boundary you can just let it go and not worry about it and then uh, sometimes sometimes you, you can look at that painting in like a, a month or or two later and you look at it and say oh you know what that actually looks good like that I went over that line like over here we went over that line a little bit I know it's over here we might have went over a few lines so that's no big deal um, if, if it's not 100 percent perfect no big deal we're having fun here too some splashes um, you know this is a composition we could use this as a finished painting if we wanted to. We could do a series of like three or four and then put them all in like a, a rectangular frame. Um, maybe do a little bit of, um, maybe do some uh, deckled edges around these and put them in a, like a, make it like a group of smaller compositions and put it into a larger frame. Or, you know, maybe a square frame and you put them like one, two, three, four, or, you know, a set of three. So you can have fun with like doing these small compositions and then, you know, you can use them as finished works. Um, so this one is now complete. We have pretty much everything. Um, i trying to think if there's anything here. Everything looks pretty close to the drawing. And I think that's good. So let's call this a finished composition. We learned a lot of great things on this um, uh, practice exercise. We, from the beginning, we learned to maybe section off a larger drawing and painting and make it into a smaller one by doing this, by making a small mat to isolate a section. And you can get, you can use this same idea with just larger and larger pictures. You know, really this is just we're using it just for this, but you could do this with an 8x10, you know, uh, 12x24, whatever size uh, work you, 